guys. Good morning. I am out in my herb garden and I want to show you my chickens because they're waiting for some food. <laughs> Aren't they cute? I know what they want and they will come running as soon as I open the front door because they know they're going to get it. So I'll show you here in a second. I got to get my scissors. They absolutely love that. And what they're eating is this plant right here. It's comfrey. And it's funny because I have three big ones in the garden and two of them are kind of covering, or they grow to the point where they will start to cover our apple trees. We have some espaliered apple trees against the fence. And so Dave every year goes, that tree's gonna kill that apple and apple tree, or excuse me, that bush is gonna kill that apple tree. And I kept telling him what a wonderful thing Valerian is. Here's the other big one and then this one right here. Um, but it wasn't until we found out this year that the chickens love comfrey and that it's good for them that he suddenly now is a fan of comfrey. These white flowers are feverfew. There's some there too, they sort of travel. And Sorry about the crunching in the background. My path is made of hazelnut shells. This very large plant here is valerian. And oh, valerian root works wonders if you can't sleep. This thing's gone crazy. It's my third year with it and it's traveling all over the herb garden. <laughs> one of them came up in the chicken coop. And let's see, this tall one right here traveled a little distance, but I love it. And this being dwarfed by my very large mound of lithodora is rosemary. I had a bigger one last year, but one of it broke off. So my herb garden is a horrid horrid mess right now or I would walk more slowly but maybe another day when I've weeded and this is yarrow well I was gonna go on our back patio because there's some really nice comfortable chairs there but as I was on my way I remembered that Dave has seen three or four really big snakes on it lately they're only gardener snakes but it doesn't matter to me I'm gonna die by snake heart attack at some point seeing one of those giant things they all terrify me, so I'm not going on there probably never again. But, um, so I'm sitting on Dave's tractor because it's right by the patio. <laughs> At least I'm safe here from any, you know, woman killing snakes. But I wanted to show you my herb garden because every time I'm out there, I'm reminded of how good God is and how he is the good physician and he is our great provider. Um, there's a verse, couple verses that I wanted to share. Second Peter 1 through 3, I think it's, that's not the chapter. Second Peter, one of the verses, shoot. In Second Peter, let me just say that. Um, it says, his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And the godliness part, he's provided everything we need. We have his word, we have the Holy Spirit, and we have encouragement and accountability of other believers. And those are the things that help us to live a godly life. Um, and then for the life part, I love this verse that says, Then God said, Behold, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. And of course, that's we know that, but I don't think we think about it, that God gave us those things specifically for our good. Um, I was again reading something on Twitter last night, um, and people were talking about, all the things they can't get in the grocery store. And uh, I, a couple people said that they'd gone to their grocery store to get over-the-counter medicines like um, aspirin and um, acetaminophen and that sort of thing, and that they're having a hard time finding them. I haven't found that to be true, but in other parts of the country, I guess, is happening. And I thought, so every time I'm out in my herb garden, you know, I, I'm just thinking about how God is so good to give us all those herbs. I love all those herbs. And it's funny to me because if you have a headache, you don't need aspirin or acetaminophen. Um, the plants that I showed you earlier, the feverfew and the valerian, uh, the yarrow and the rosemary, along with ginger and peppermint, and there are a lot of others, um, all work toward migraines and headaches. They work to, to ease those. Um, and I have used almost all of those for that. Rosemary, I don't tend to use for that, but for other things. Now the valerian, you have to be careful because it will put you to sleep. It really is a great um, insomniac curer. But we have all those things right there growing in the garden. And I remember when I first started studying herbalism, hearing that um, 
on every continent in the world within, I think it was a 10 or 12 mile radius. Um, people can find what they need for most all their ailments in the herbs that are growing there, which I think is just phenomenal, uh, but so godlike also. Now, um, there is one other, I, one other cure that I have not tried and probably won't, um, that I guess for 200 years people have been taking a slice of potato and um, wrapping it around their head where they have the migraine, but I'm just gonna stick to my herbs because that sounds silly to me. Um, but you can make teas and extracts and um, supplements, you can put them in capsules and stuff. And those things are just there for the picking, literally for the picking. So we have to remember all the time that God is providing one way or another. And the chickens, that makes me laugh too. I'm sorry, I'm sweating. I am just a delicate flower and um, I don't do well in the heat. So it's a wonderful cloudy day and Dave and I are out working in the garden. He's working on the blueberries and I'm um, going to plant some figs. But um, I just don't do well in this weather. And yes, it's the Pacific Northwest, but come on, it's probably 70 degrees. There's no need for that anywhere in the world. So please forgive me as I dab myself, but where was I? Oh, the chickens. Um, I have gotten the most amazing illustrations and anecdotes out of my farm animals, goats, chickens, the pigs, the sheep, all of it. We don't have all those now, but we have. But the chickens you know, they will literally, I'm going to have to film it sometime, but they will run as soon as they hear the front door. And it's not near the chicken coop. I mean, they're listening for it. And it's probably 20 or, I don't know. I, I'm so bad with that. I'll have Dave verify. But um, 100 yards maybe, I don't know. But they can hear it and they come running. They do their little waddle. It's so cute. And what I am conscious of whenever I go down there and I cut down that comfrey is that they want it. It's got great things for them, but I'm the only one that can get it for them because it's on the other side of the fence. And so I wake up every day thinking, I gotta get out there and give the chickens their comfrey. Now, they're just chickens. Um, am I more compassionate than God? I'm not. So the Lord knows what we need, and most of the things we need, need only He can provide. I mean, really, when we get down to it, every heartbeat and every breath is a gift from the Lord. Um, you can't make your heart beat one more time. I'll wait if you want to try it, but we're going to miss you. But um, I, I just am so conscious of the fact that really every penny that we earn, God has allowed us to have the strength to have that job. And he lined up the job for us. I truly believe that. So um, we have to remember those little things like the birds, where the, the word says that, um, that he feeds the sparrows of the air. And are you not worth more than a bird to him? And I have hummingbirds. And it's so funny because um, in the winter, I was really panicking a lot because when it got down to freezing, the um, nectar in my hummingbird feeder was freezing. And so I would wake up every morning and dash out there, grab it, bring it in and put it in a little warm water to thaw it. Um, and of course the hummingbirds, they you know hum around. They hang out there and just kind of look at you with that look like, can you hurry it up? <laughs> so it was always a big rush. And then finally, a couple of years ago, I found a hummingbird feeder that has a light that you clip underneath it and it all winter long it keeps their food um, liquid <laughs> it doesn't freeze and I was so relieved to have that so if I care about my hummingbirds that much and my chickens you have got to know how important you are to the Lord you are worth all the chickens and all the hummingbirds on the earth to him he knows what you want he has the ability to provide it for you and the desire to provide it for you. You just need to start leaning on him more. And even some of those little things that don't seem like needs, but they're just wants, ask God for those things. I do have a story I'll tell you in another episode that um, when God provided some things that I absolutely did not need, but I wanted and they were so specific, it's there's no way it wasn't the Lord. So anyway, that's all for today. But um, I hope you're thinking about the Lord today. And as you're eating or whatever you're doing, just take a minute to thank him that he provided that meal for you. Um, like I said, we couldn't even breathe without him. So go enjoy this day. I'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.